So in this tutorial, we're going to go into how to mint a digital object identifier for your animal tracking data. Now this is a new tool that's been created within Zootrack. And if you go into the repository and look at some of the projects, you'll begin to see that some of the projects now have this DOI, which stands for Digital Object Identifier, and a number. Um, associated with a data set. So this enables you to uh, cite, the, cite the data set within uh, journal articles and also means that anybody else that uses your data set can uh, cite this DOI and you'll get a citation accredited to your work. So it's a great way of, of sharing your data and assuring that you get citations. So how do we mint a DOI for our um, our own personal data sets. So we can see here that I'm logged in and in my login if we go to my projects somehow okay here's some of my projects here and you can see that some of my projects already have a DOI that have been minted for them and if you have a DOI the data has to be open access um, and what we'll do is we'll change one of these delayed access projects here into an open access project and mint a DOI so it can become a citable reference. So when we open the project, here's our tracking data. This is for saltwater crocodiles on the Wenlock River in Cape York, Australia. Here's their detection data. And what we'll do is we'll go into here under project, uh, create a DOI request. So we'll click on that and this will take you to the first page in the process and um, when we put in the request and you'll see here that there's a number of uh, criteria that have to be met in order for the data uh, to have a DOI minted for it. So first thing is to know is the DOIs are minted from the Australian National Data Service. Um, but we can mint DOIs for projects that fall outside the Australia jurisdiction. But you'll see here at the top of the page this little link for toolkits. And if you go in here, there's a really good uh, number of help files and information in uh, how to get set up for minting a DOI, what sort of information we require what metadata is required of your data and um, to ensure that it that it meets the the minimum requirements for the Australian National Data Service to provide the DOI for it and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute also to know if you go into publish data here we can see all the other projects that are currently within the Zootrack platform that have DOIs minted for them so one of those projects could be yours Okay, so let's go back in my projects. And this is the, the saltwater crocodile project we're going to mint the DOI for. So once we create a DOI request, now we can see at the top here that we have a little cross under here, which means that the open access to this data has been delayed until the 31st of the 3rd, 2017. Now, we can only mint a DOI if the data is open access. So you can go down the Edit Project link. So the first thing we have to do is go in here and open the access to our project. So it's no longer delayed access, it's open access. We can update that project there. Okay, now using the, the little drop down menu on the side here, we can navigate between our our project data and metadata and the DOI request form. So let's just go back to that. So you can see that our little cross has been replaced with a green tick because the project is now open access. As we go down we'll see that we have another cross which says that this data must be available under the CCBY license for it to be a DOI. That's again set by the Australian National Data Standards. It's not to do with us. So again, we can go back to our, our uh, project summary screen 
which is what this is. This is the project metadata screen. And for CCBY, we must tick all those boxes. And we can see now that our project is now CCBY, which is Creative Commons Attribution License. So we've met the criteria. Let's click back on there. Go to our DOI request. And you can see now we've got a number of ticks enabling us to proceed with our minting of the DOI. So these data are to become a citable resource under Creative Commons license and discoverable within Research Data Australia. That's what we want. Tick yes. The published data collection will be closed for perpetuity and cannot be edited, deleted or added to. So that's an important point. Once you mint the DOI, you cannot go back and change that project. Okay, so ensure that the project, all the information that you want is in there, the tracks are edited correctly to what you want them to be in the future, because once you mint that DOI, we can't take it back. So yeah, we're happy with the data as it is. So the project authorship is correct. This again is an important point. If you want to check, click on the contributors link and it takes you right back to this page and we can see that we have a, a number of contributors there to this project. We could add another one, so let's add another one of our research team who's not been included. Somewhere. Okay, so we'll add this contributor. Okay, so now we've added that to our, our we're happy now with our contributors to the project. And we'll update that. Just gives the track a little minute. Okay. We can now check that. Yep, our contribution list is correct. Tick yes, yes, yes. So is sufficient metadata supplied for each of the animals? Okay, so we do encourage you to review this um, for the project metadata. And we give you a link here, so let's go back and review that screen. We got our title, our description of the data, species, our spatial reference, ensure that's correct for your data set. We had a, so we need to put in our ethics clearance from and then update the project. So it is a little bit of a long process, but we get in there. And as you can see, Zootrack takes you through each of those processes one step at a time. Um, so let's look at the metadata, metadata for each of the animal deployments. Okay, so here's our animals that we have here. Um, we've done most of them already, but I know that this one here, so let's go edit metadata for this crocodile, it's called Dick Smith. So it's, I really want to encourage you to um, make the metadata as comprehensive as possible. And that will ensure and, and improve or enhance the, the reuse of your data by other researchers. So it's useful information to have the sex of the animal, which is tagging. We don't have weights for these animals. They were crocodiles, but we do have lengths. So we can put in the length here. Um, millicentimeters. Life phase, it was an adult. So we have the tag identifier, which was 6641004. It was a Talonix tag. Um, useful information is to have the capture and release date, so that if someone comes to use your data, they know what each of those uh, of the detections actually relates to in terms of when the animal was, was, was captured and when it was released. So our capture date. So we've included a, 
a drop down menu there. So it's the length of September and the location. So we'll put in the longitude. The latitude and the longitude. Now our capture and release sites and dates were this at the same location, so we can do the same. So we'll just copy and paste those coordinates in. Um, in this case. We don't really need the, the tag deployment dates that can be gathered from the longitude and latitudes. Um, an important piece of metadata that we've included in Zootrack is whether the, the animal is alive or dead at detachment. We think that's important to enable uh, G to understand survival ship. So experimental contest, we were monitoring behavior. For management purposes, the tag weight was quite a large tag. I think it's about 90 grams. Duty cycle was every 12 hours. Attachment we attached it externally to the scoots. That's the hard, bony section behind the head. Our data retrieval, so how does the data uh, come back to use the researcher? In this case, we use the Argos system. We had no other data quality manipulation, but another piece of information I like to put into the comments is just the, the PIT tag number. So we use a microchip, and I think it's very useful to include that number in case somebody else finds that animal and scans it. So that's the metadata completed for that one, just that one animal. You can see it now, here's what it'll look like within the uh, within the DOI data package. Here's the information and there's the long and lats. So I've actually done it for all the other animals um, within that project. Okay, so let's just oh. go back to that project. Okay, so now we're happy with everything. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so we've ensured that our licensing is correct. We've ensured our the data is finalized, the actual raw detections. We've ensured that our contributors to the project are correct in their contact details. And we've ensured that the metadata, both for the project and each of the animals, is sufficient for reuse of the data in the future. So once you get to this point, click Build the DOI Data Package. And this will create a zip file that has all that data up. So all the animal detection data plus all the metadata is now incorporated within this little zip file. We can download that file, open it up and have a look and check it. So we encourage you to go back and check those files. Um, once you're happy with it, you think it's correct, you can then, you can either delete the request if you want to go back and edit it further using the drop-down menu at the side. Otherwise, submit the request, the DOI, that'll go off to the Zootrack data manager. That's it gone, the status requested, and you should receive an email in a few days telling you if the DOI is sufficient. We'll, the data manager will check that data. If it meets the ANS criteria, we'll mint the DOI and forward the metadata to the Australian National data repositories. Um, if there's a problem, you'll hear back from us to uh, encourage you to make sufficient changes to the data set. Um, so that's this tutorial over. So yeah, I encourage you to mint DOIs for your data and 